This is Paul, the Library Director for the Brockton Public Library, welcoming you to Episode 7 of Virtual Everyone Has a Voice, a poetry series that began in the Brockton Public Library many years ago, started by host Philip Hesaurus, and uh, we're keeping it alive for you today in these times of pandemic and uh, lockdown in the virtual world with the help of Brockton Community Access. Uh, everybody sit back, enjoy the poetry and the art that you're about to experience, take a breath, and um, have a great day. We'll see you soon. It was hot when I left my car. I thought one inch would bar any untoward activity. What was I thinking in my naivety? So I left the two front windows open, no more than one inch, I swear. I opened the side door yesterday to give the interior a bit more air and discovered poop on the side of the seat and on the side door. Were my eyes sure? How could that happen? I knew they had it in them, but not with such accuracy. Ballistic precision, projectile precision, pigeon precision. How's it going everybody? Uh, name is Marcus Pierre and I'm a poet and the piece that I'm gonna to present to you is called Who Cares? And here it goes. Who cares? Whoever cares, bear their fears to steer them in the wrong direction. People tend to not live their fullest lives for their own protection. Watching opportunities leave is like being hit in every body part. It sucks to have all the ability in the world without the courage to hardly start. But the public eye is upon you, so you distance yourself from your goals and dreams until you embody Mars. But your next move, you can plan it. Understanding that you have an endless supply of grace and strength is when you can handle it. You're the author of your life as you write your own narrative. Everything is done through a design and time you're here to win. Motivation is the wind to your sails. Imagination is the pen to your tails. Right away with each line you say with all your might, your way will be found as long as there is a thing such as the day. Your testimony is an epic story. When there's pain, there's glory. Even when the rain is stormy, you can break every chain with your own feet, with one step at a time. Don't feel the need to reject your grind. We're all smart, so respect and invest in your own mind, for in it there's an abundantly incredible gold mine with lots of priceless and rare artifacts. You are priceless and rare, and those are the facts. Part ways with your Red Sea, your vision is your staff. Your destiny is beyond any hardships in your path. With all the twists and the turns, and the rips and the burns, there's a gift that is earned, and when it's wrapped, its impact is like a bird, because with it, you can fly high in the friendly skies, and you can fly high above enemy lines, to the point where you can't be touched by the enemy's lies, and your altitude can help you see where your enemy lies. When you're pushed out of the nest, you're ready for, fight, for flight. It's normal to be scared because the setting is high. Even though you're falling from the nest, stay in the fight because you'll have something to be proud of by the end of the night. Your wings are meant for flapping, so start crafting and be about action. Any negative subtitles thrown your way are from people who are remotely pleasant, so ignore their captions. Because their captions are their captions. But your passion is your passion. And anything you want can happen. It all starts with you. So again, I ask, who cares? I'm not waging war, but I declare that you share. Uh, the piece I'm going to present to you is called Optimism and... Here it goes. Optimism. An optimist operates in the open. Their oath consists of kindness and they own it. Regardless of their opponent, their warmth can melt hearts that were once frozen. Optimism is a serum for the victims of friction. It's a system of thinking with a mission. The mindset makes life rhythmic. It's a ticket that welcomes all passengers on a train with strong pistons. However, to get on the train is your decision. Being considered an optimist is a compliment. It means that you have a state of higher consciousness. When negativity is present, an optimist will do the opposite. Remaining positive during life's dominance is an accomplishment. Some look at a glass as half empty, while others view it as half full. Don't let pessimists cover your eyes with a wool that's been fabricated in which they use to pull. You're a bull in an arena. Criticism comes with a thought pattern, so while the critics chatter, climb your ladder to avoid being vacuumed into the dark matter. God will deliver your blessings on a silver platter. You just gotta wait for it. Optimists focus on the good as opposed to the bad. They're happy with what they have and it makes them glad. Their path involves math. They add laughs and subtract wrath, which equals the perfect counter from life's hits that'll forever last. There's a fine line between good and evil. There's a reason why chickens don't fly like eagles. The optimistic are ambitious and they have a position. Despite others' twisted predictions, they proceed with precision. The optimistic characteristic is too much for the parasitic. Negativity is a bad tenant that needs to be evicted. 
You might have dealt with the man with the horns. He'll scorn and will try to rip through chapters of your life and leave the pages all torn. And during that time, you might have been through storm after storm, but the reason why he dishes out situational thorns is because he knows you have a purpose since the day you were born. For your crown is destined to be worn. But don't get coerced by his urge to emerge as he'll throw dirt on your work and try to blurt discouraging words and try to get on your nerves and he'll exert his energy because he wants you to purge for the worse. For he knows you have drive, but he wants you to go in reverse. Just remember that you're blessed and things can be worse and optimism is cleansing as a mindset to rehearse and the bright side is a nice vibe. It's like the stars and the night sky. Inner peace is a signal connect to it like Wi-Fi. Any wage or inappropriate behavior from a stranger can feel like the edge of a razor, see? The collision is no match for God's unrelenting favor that's unmerited and inherited. As for the weight of your problems, God's grace is strong enough to carry it. But if you don't believe in God, then that's cool. You can seek a good Samaritan or a relative or a therapist. But relatively speaking, regardless of your beliefs, our lives have a deeper meaning. Those who model negativity strike a pose. But it's something to oppose. Uphold the good values you learned in the first place like gold. Optimism rings like church bells. It's worth engaging in when proposed. It's music to your ears when proposed. Oppressors have their own offenders. Their breakthrough is pending as they have fences that could use mending. See, they silently own offenses while they have their own agenda. There's a difference between a pessimist and an optimist. If bashing is a target of others, an optimist will optimist. The archer builds an arc to embark on a departure. Honor what you have to offer and you'll prosper. Harbor a roster who will challenge you to be sharper and will speak life into your dreams so that you have strong armor and go farther. Happiness is not a kid's game. Don't hide, seek it. Your dream is like air, but it's golden. Retrieve it, love it, see it, think of it, breathe it, be it, nourish and receive it. Relationships that don't support your dreams are like trees. If you can't grow together, branch out and leave it. The world is yours for the taking. Optimism helps with life's aching. Whether you're a queen or a king, your dreams aren't meant to be followed, start chasing. When you find your way out of the labyrinth, it's amazing. Your breed is unique. Your mindset will help you succeed. There's plenty of room in your tribe. There's no need to compete. Add generosity to your routine. Joy is the way to live. Regardless of your blood type, be positive. Thank you. Peace and love. Black Lives Matter. Have a good day. Night Blooming Sirius for Denise Gavis. Prefers the dark, warm and moist. The tree-like plant pulls you but its swirl, closed petals, pale flesh. Tight patterns undulate, the perfume anoints your body, scent of whispered secrets unfolding. Each languid petal drapes radiance over islands of night air. This shapeshifter opens only at your blackest hour. A harbinger offering but one chance. Take the risk. This unsettling beauty dies in the garish light. Living in the future. Sea levels shifted underneath your feet. Magnetic north is drifting from the pole. You used to lean on answers that repeat. No old key now fits any new keyhole. Your problems will admit no diminution. Stumbling blocks will be put in your way. Don't fall in love with any one solution. What worked yesterday? won't work today. It used to be you'd spend your life to find security and a safe place to rest. That's out the window. Now, retrain your mind to grapple with a different daily test. Let go whatever got you through before. Change direction when you hit a wall instead of looking for a hidden door. To rest is no security at all. Slip around the obstacles you meet. Go in the way you're being made to go, even when it looks like a retreat. The right path may not be for you to know. At rest is good as dead. So let that be and move. Be water flowing to the sea.
using an accent. When I use an accent, it's about the placement of the tongue, the opening between the lips, the setting of the jaw. Next, it's about the pace of the release of breath, and then it's force. And finally, the feeling of the carving of the air as my tongue's tip is moving in my mouth. And after that, remembering the feeling and hanging on to it and swinging from it like it was a rope tied to the branch of a familiar tree out over water and back, but always hanging on to it. But when I'm talking to myself in my own head or praying, or not saying what I'm thinking as I talk to someone there or someone far away, known or unknown to me, or someone dead whom I will always love. I use no accent. Or perhaps I use the voice I first heard speak in me. Commencement. This poem is from my book, Take and Receive. She graduates triumphant, proud to win. We crane our necks and snap her photograph. And here, I want to emphasize begin, although the day is at its end. We laugh. We laugh as though, through simple force of will, she might escape the lessons of her fate. As if, because of years she spent at school, all future tragedies will have to wait. I swallow sorrow as I scan the sky and memorize the day as in a book, admitting that I see a sweet goodbye recorded in the photos that we took. This is Joyce Wilson reading Beirut Garden. We walked the city streets arm in arm and talked of ways our common history unlocked the stories of our family, the tribes and feudal lords, the olive farms past windows where the fragrances of thyme and allspice, cumin, pepper, coriander, spoke of celebrations with the grandeur that flavors of the East and West combine, past the garden and the busy unmarked church so far from home, and what we hope to find among the many things we'd leave behind, the answers to the questions of our search, what will become of the Syrian refugees? what will become of the Syrian refugees. A genuine hero, shall my Masina Pelwet? Oh, shall my Masina Pelwet? We love you for killing fear, not frightened. How can we forget our genuine David against Goliath? You were a powerful officer in the city of Leogan working for, our, for your enemy. But as a patriot, you could not betray us. You abandoned your high status. You created Kakos, a powerful guerrilla, to fight against the imperialism. We love you, our hero. Forever we admire you for the electricity of hope and peace. You stand up with the Kakos to win the value of our freedom. For me, you turn into a mother. For your blood, I say merci beaucoup. Adieu, per right. Adieu, per right. You, you won't lose your statue. Adieu, per right. I do mighty dumb. I'm awakened by your patriotic love to accept death. I am awakened by you not bowing down to the enemy and not taking the money to cover the truth. I do pearl white. I do pearl white. My grandfather said to me, Pearl White is our hero who died to live in our hearts and mind for eternity. Father said for me, 
Never to forget such a hero when you grow up. Oh, Pell Wright, for the organist and citizen of port au -Prince, you fought for, you were never won. Oh, Pell Wright, city of Hench is still forever in mourning for you. We're glad you, uh, you didn't go on your knees. Oh, Pell Wright, we grew accustomed to death and forget the dead, but how can we ever forget you? Pell Wright, nothing changed she in Haiti for Haitian. Many betray us as one had done to you. And in, in his eye, the enemy kills you and nail you on a door to create fear and scared us. In the morning, the enemy went around the city of Paroquence to show your body on a door, nailed like Jesus Christ so we could we could bow down to their feet when i think of it i'm still trembling why did they have to nail you like the savior jesus oh per right oh per right for what you had done for haiti how much do we owe this is Shake the Dust Off. We have been in a slumber for several months without reprieve. People we're closest to have died, but there's no time to grieve. You're a soldier in a mind, body, and spiritual war. Nothing will prepare you for what today's got in store. Shake the dust off. You've been knocked down. It's been tough. People picking battles with you out of hatred. Well, enough. Come center stage, the world's waiting for a change. There's been a shift in the universe, it feels rather strange. Doing what's right often takes a back seat to what feels right. You spent too long doing what you like and it feels good. The consequences outweigh the infraction as well that it should. Society is critical enough, why make it worse for yourself? Take what you would normally say or react to and put it on a shelf. For yesterday's history, tomorrow's a mystery. All we have is the here and now. Fulfill God's plan. Do amazing things, then take a bow. There was no loyalty in anyone. Dishonest intent. There's always an excuse. But it's time to let go. Set free and be loose. There's got to be a speech of proportion. It won't be smooth or genuine. The lack of concern has lost its peace and you have to cut it free. There needs to be a U-Haul of emotions and remember that it's who is your first love. He's smart as a fox, fierce as a lion, and peaceful as a dove. Jesus, no matter how much we've raised hell and been blind, he sees the beginning to the end when the world is unkind. Step up. It's time to speak out to this thing. Be bold. And take a stand. The results could move mountains. Be impactful and grand. Hi, my name is Nicole, and this piece is titled Rum Stained Her Rum. You contaminated her skin with your drunken hands. When she told you to fuck off, you finished the bottle. The echoes of our family yelled to forgive him in his drunkenness. But I refused to accept beer-drenched excuses in place of sorry. She can still smell the rum in her room. My fingers graze the glass. It's cold to the touch. Yet my heat transfers to it. I walk beside it, tracing till the wooden border ends. My ears twitch. Twitch to the sound of a bell. A fog that once saturated my eyes has now been lifted. There was a woman in front of me. 
She sways the way I do. Her hands move as mine. We touch with the glass wall. I thought my curiosity would surpass hers. I push on the glass with my hands. Her and I both exclaim, who are you? Before I can know, the fog submerges, the bell rings, and I'm in the dark once again. Hey everybody, this is Jason Ray from Oddball Magazine. This poem is for Rita Dove. She once wrote a poem called American Smooth. And this poem is called, I Wish I Could Dance American Smooth. I have never been a good dancer. I am when I'm alone. I can dance. Hands in the air, waving triumphant. Who let the dogs out? You bet, I did. I've always felt like the spotlight was on me when I stepped onto that dance floor in the middle of the room in that hall. Rented, carpeted, tucks on, tie on, but the spotlight was always on me. And I didn't want it on me. I couldn't raise my hands in the air and wave them around like I just don't care and abandon. I was self-obsessed. How dumb do I look right now? Am I sweating? Are they laughing? I hate this song. Why am I still dancing? I don't want to do this. I feel stupid. Look, now they are laughing because I am not dancing. Because I don't want to dance. I say I hate this song because I do. She says I look robotic. I hate dancing. But when I'm alone, I dance. I dance. I jump around. I get down. In public, I am restrained, left alone, the camera clicking, not wanting it to be, usually wanting to leave, wondering in my head when the carpet, when the carpet got shampooed last, and if the hall, if the hall is haunted. This poem is from a uh, upcoming book. It's a poem I wrote called "Dying to Be." And I wrote it a long time ago when I was stuck on the train in Boston. And uh, it's from my new book, upcoming called Train of Thought to Almost Home. Dying to be. This re rehearsal life, this photograph is fading. Not much light to shine. The contrast is off. The world is a flower and each petal has been picked and dried out on a gravestone. I am one of a bunch of flowers trampled by an overzealous god or a villain in the heart running each game. You can't hear the house. You can't beat the house. You walk out with nothing but a sad smile. My gravestone will be tried hard but not enough for anyone to care or for you to remember me. This world of threes, this disease, this distance, this debased disaster, the timestamp on this life, overdue like a book, a vessel, that sank too soon. A world of mad hatters and only one Alice. This world is no one to win. Unidentified. Federal agents. Federal agents. Federal agents. Operating without accountability. How do we stop them? Who's going to tell them? You can't kidnap people off the streets. I mean, where are the police? Why aren't the police stopping these kidnappings? 
Who works for who? Who works for who? The people are in the streets. They want to change. Stop the violence, the racism, the hoarding of wealth, stealing from the poor. Stop raping the earth and everyone on it. 2020, police brutality, police violence. A civil rights violation, excessive force, beatings, a cry for justice only brings more vicious beatings. Early records suggest labor strikes were the first large-scale incidences of police brutality in the United States. The events, the Great Railroad Strike of 1877, the Pullman Strike of 1894, the Lawrence Textile Strike of 1912, the Ludlow Massacre of 1914, the Great Steel Strike of 1919, and on and on and on. That's right, paid thugs now are dressed militarized. The PR machine for the military says it's given the military a bad name. Why is the military stopping them, protecting the people? I mean, who works for who? Forcing so many into poverty, desperate people are easy to control. Or are they? Or are they? Every camper knows, don't get in between a mother bear and her cub. Yes, the mother came out. Dads, the youth were carrying the torch. A Bill of Rights, the First Amendment, freedom of speech, freedom of assembly. Congress didn't get the job done. They left on vacation. Millions have no money or work. People need food today, today. You don't go on vacation for a month. I mean, who works for who? Who works for who? Yes, we're in the street. Yes, we're, in the street. Yes, we're not going we're back. back. We need real change. We need real change. Who works for who? Who works for who? We need real change. We need real change. Who works for who? Where's the accountability? Stop the violence. Stealing from the poor. Who works for who? Who works for who?